Amen. Well, clap your hands if you love Jesus. Come on, clap your hands if you love Jesus. What a joy, what a joy it is to, to be in fellowship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing, and we're so glad. And anybody just glad to be connected in worship on a Wednesday like this? Anyone just glad to be either online or in person? We're grateful. Uh, for each and every one of you, uh, this is our time as a church family in which we set aside to not only worship God, but to go uh, deeper into his word. And so if you're watching us, especially those that are watching online or even those that are in person that, that use online platforms such as Facebook or even YouTube and even have access to our website, I want to encourage you to invite someone, invite someone to be a part of this experience today. I believe God has something that's special in store for us today. And so we uh, don't want to be selfish. We want to share this good thing uh, with somebody else. So please, if you're on Facebook, click the share button. Uh, let people know uh, that First G is in uh, Bible study and all are welcome to come grow with us. Uh, if you're watching us uh, via our website, share the link with someone. Uh, of course, uh, on YouTube, you could do the same, but this is a great time to invite people. Uh, to be a part of our faith and to encourage them that Jesus Christ is real and that he's available. I want to lift up a portion of scripture uh, as we begin uh, this evening. The 34th Psalm is where we'll be reading from. Psalm 34. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. 
His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, we say thank you. We thank you for your goodness and for your grace. We thank you for your presence in our lives. And we have found great joy, great peace, great comfort just from knowing you. And so, God, we have come here on another Wednesday with great expectations. God, we know you have something to say. And certainly we want to be prepared and positioned to hear it. So touch all of our hearts, our minds, and our souls to receive what you have prepared for us. We thank you for the journey. You've been with us all week long. And so, God, we just ask, oh God, that you continue to shower your blessings upon us, continue to protect us. But God, we thank you. We thank you today and give you glory and honor that we can identify with the words of the psalmist. We have tasted and we have seen for ourselves that you, oh Lord, are good. And you're good all the time. We bless your name for it. We love you and we lift you. In Jesus' name, let every heart say amen. Let's put our hands together. Bless God's name. Come on, we can do better than that. Bless the name of our God. Percy Family is a simple song that says, I just want to praise you forever and ever. For the Lord that we serve is do all the just glory and praise. Amen. So we're going to lift this song up. If you know it, join with me. If you're not listening to it, you can grab onto it. It's really simple, I promise. It says, just want to praise you. Forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Yeah. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. For blessing me, simple song. Just wanna praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory. And honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. We got it this time so we can sing it together. Just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you done for me oh blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you thank you jesus for blessing me can we go up one more oh blessings and glory and honor said they all belong to you said blessings and glory and honor 
they all belong to you blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you thank you jesus for blessing me said i just want to praise you forever and ever and ever thank you jesus for blessing me mercy can we put our hands together hallelujah god you're worthy of all the honor and the glory and the praise thank you jesus for blessing me oh, 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 oh amen 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 let's put our hands together and bless the lord bless the lord oh my soul all that is within me bless his holy name he's a good god and he's worthy to be praised. How many of you all feel like that today? He's worthy of all the praise, all the glory. It certainly belongs to him. And uh, we want to, as we have come here for the sake of Bible study, want to continue uh, going through the book of James. The book of James is where God is calling our attention in this season. And the book of James, I always say for anyone that, really is striving to be a better Christian. Uh, certainly, I want to encourage you to read widely, uh, to read intently, to read throughout all of Scripture. I always believe that James is a great book for those that would like to apply some things to their life, even on today. He challenges us uh, to uh, consider the things of Christ and to become better Christians each and every day. So that's where we'll be. We're back in the book of James. James chapter 2 is where uh, we will be tonight. James uh, chapter 2 uh, is where we are tonight. I want to lift up that particular text, starting with James uh, chapter 2, read verse 14. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation says in these words, what good is it? Verse number 14, James chapter 2, what good is it? Dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions, can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say goodbye and have a good day, stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing, what good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is, a dead and, it is dead and useless. Now, someone may argue some people have faith, others have good deeds, but I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith for you believe there, there is one God good for you. Even the demons believe this and they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see what that faith without good deeds is useless? Verse 21 says, don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. And so it happened just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God. And God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Rahab the prostitute is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Verse 26 just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So here it is. James is challenging us yet again as people of faith to aim higher, to live according not to not our own standards, but the standards of our Lord. And James is here again tonight, begging us, beseeching us, encouraging us as Christians uh, to dig deeper, to do more to allow our faith to come alive. That our faith is more than just gathering on Sunday. Our faith is more than just getting a boost that we get from coming on Wednesday. But our faith allows us to be true Christians in the sense that we operate, we function in every facet of our lives as the hands and the feet of God. We say it so often, this world needs more than Christians having church, this world needs for the Christians to actually be the church. Scripture tells us, but without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I want to just pull the house today to ask you, is there anyone that still has faith in our God? For we are living, amen, we are living in some very challenging and some changing times which come to test and try our faith. And we live in a culture, in a context that is becoming more anti-God anti-faith, anti-Christ as time progresses. But I would suggest to us that faith that cannot be tested is faith that cannot be trusted. Without faith, brothers and sisters, it is impossible to please our Lord. If you want to know God's love language, I would suggest to you it's faith. If you want to really tug at God's heart, I'm telling you it's Faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please our Lord. I want to remind you today, as you are what I would love to call, in fact, I, I call myself this, I'm, I am a practicing Christian. I am striving every day to be a better Christian. I am not resting on any sort of laurels. I am challenging myself to become a better Christian each and every day. I am a practicing Christian. But let me give you this first point of this lesson today. Belief in God matters. It does matter. It makes the difference. In fact, I've learned through these challenging times that it is my faith that keeps me sane. It is my faith that keeps me encouraged. But it is also my faith that gives me a road map on how to navigate through the various challenges and issues of our day. It is our faith in God. And I have said it over and over again, and I'll say it even on tonight, that brothers and sisters, the faith that we keep is also the faith that will keep us. Maybe there's someone that can testify to that, that it is the faith that your grandparents and your parents and godparents and Sunday school teachers and coaches and mentors passed on to you that it's that faith that is keeping you during the challenging and changing times that we live in. Brothers and sisters, hold fast to your faith because faith, even in a time like this, still matters. I have found that our faith frees us. For he that the Son sets free is free indeed. Our faith focuses us because Diedrich Bonhoeffer said in this way, when, when God calls a man, he bids him to come and die. We are not here to rest on our Christian laurels, but we have been called to activate our spirits and focus those energies towards service. It not just frees us, but our faith focuses us. We got some work to do. We, we, we've got a charge to keep and a God to glorify. So our faith just doesn't free us. There is liberation in our faith, but there's also a framework on which God has called us to operate in. 
Our faith frees us, brothers and sisters. Our faith focuses us, but our faith also, I'm grateful for this, feeds us. Oh, brothers and sisters, I'm grateful that our faith is well-founded in the Lord. And when the road gets rough, and when the obstacles are on every hand, and the burdens are hard to bear, and you start feeling love starved, and hope starved, and joy and peace starved, it is our faith, brothers and sisters, that feeds us. And if there's anyone that can testify to that kind of paradigm, that when you felt like all hope was gone and it seemed like things weren't gonna get better, hasn't your faith come alive in you and encouraged you to keep on keeping on, to hold on to God's unchanging hand, to know that he will make a way somehow? I'm telling you, my faith feeds me. Not only that, I'm grateful that our faith favors us. Oh yes, when you are a child of God, you are favored. And I'm not talking about this distorted viewpoint of favor that became so prevalent around the latter 80s and all throughout the 90s, this dumbed down gospel called prosperity gospel. I'm not talking about favor in that sense. I'm talking about even when you don't have seemingly enough, God makes sure that he supplies all of your needs according to his riches and glory. I'm, I'm talking about a kind of favor that you cannot find just in humanity, but you find it in a God that looks beyond all of your faults and sees your needs, that has a cattle on a thousand hills that can provide for you, protect you, and will be with you every step of the way. That's the kind of favor I thank God for. And that comes from knowing him. And I, I'll just testify to this. The more and more I learn about God, the more and more I can't help but love him more. Our faith frees us. Our faith focuses us. Our faith feeds us. Our faith favors us. But James wants us to know, with all that being said, faith is not enough. And let me just say it this way. Although belief in God matters, as true Christians that are serious about the Savior, belief is good, but belief is not enough. That's what James is talking about. He said, belief is a good thing. I'm glad you believe. I'm glad you're a part of the body of Christ. I'm glad you are saved. I'm glad you go to church. I'm, I'm glad you are connected to some local assembly, but James is letting us know that's good. That's awesome. I'm glad you believe. But James is challenging us tonight to know that especially in the times that we live in with all of the needs, with all of the obstacles in our way, James is letting us know, child of God, faith is not enough. Belief in God is not enough. He says in verse 19 through 20, he says, you, you say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. I like the way he says it here by way of this particular version, New Living Translation, says, good for you. That's, that's, that's good for you. He, he says, even the demons believe in this. And they tremble with terror. He says, how foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? He says, belief in God is great, but it's not enough. If you have faith, Good for you. But how is your faith, hear me today, impacting others? With all of the challenges of our day, with all of the needs right here on this corner, how is your faith as a Christian coming alive so much so that it changes lives, saves souls, makes our community better, how is your faith impacting others? Because your faith in itself is good. But James is challenging us to go beyond the realm or the comfort zone of our faith. In fact, that was the life and ministry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
he got or challenged those to come out of their religious comfort zones. Yeah, you don't get crucified unless you try to get people out of their comfort zone. Our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, his biggest obstacle or his, his main opponent throughout Scripture, let's be honest, were traditional conservative church folk. Read the text. Uh, in his day, we called them Pharisees. And I would suggest to you that in many of our churches throughout Christendom, the Pharisee spirit is still alive and well. There are those that think it's enough to have their religion and their relationship with God, that think it's enough if we gather Sunday and Wednesday after Wednesday, but James is saying that's not enough. That it's almost as if he's saying that's the bare minimum. He said you should be doing that. That is not an achievement. James is saying we've got to go beyond our beliefs. James is saying that even demons and the gates of hell believe in God. Believing God is not an achievement. Brothers and sisters, belief in God is substantive, but yet it's not enough. James is saying we have to behave how we believe. Yeah. Like if you really believe what you believe, then you ought to behave how you believe. And could I say parenthetically, as we have gone through these last two years, I pray that there were people that witnessed us and saw us go through the various struggles and strains of the pandemic and can say without a doubt, truly, they believe. Because when you truly believe, when you go through hardship and obstacles and challenges, there ought to be something about how you believe that dictates how you behave. I pray, oh God, that, that when people looked at us as we were going through the pandemic, they didn't see us walking around with our heads hanging down without hope, but that they saw us operating in our faith because we believe. And that's where we ought to be even on tonight. No matter what the challenge, no matter how heavy the burden, no matter what may be ahead of us, I want to challenge the church to behave how it believes. And you ought to believe tonight that no matter how bad it looks or how bad it feels, God is still God. He is still on the throne. He will make a way out of no way. Is there anyone besides me tonight that says, you know what, Pastor, I believe. I believe that the Lord is God and beside him there is no other. I believe that waiting on God is never a waste of time. I believe God is able to open up doors that no man could shut and shut doors that no man could open. I didn't mean to go this far, but is there anyone that can testify? Pastor, I know it's not easy. Pastor, I'm dealing with some things, but I still believe. I believe God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or even imagine. I believe that he has not brought me this far to leave me. I believe he can still heal cancer. I believe he can still raise me from my dead situation. I believe he can mend marriages. I still believe. You, you, can't, you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. I'm just challenging you, brothers and sisters, that we ought to behave how we believe. That we are spiritual beings going through a human experience. But we believe that God is still in control and that God has planted us on the earth to do more than just believe. He's planted us on the earth to be an example to other people. That I know it looks bad, but somebody like us ought to show up in the room. And when we show up in the room, I feel like the room ought to shift when a true believer comes in the room. You know, I, I will never forget, I will never forget, I uh, went to, to visit a member in the hospital, and uh, it was looking bleak. And it really seemed like it was the end. And despite all of that, 
what was amazing to me is the reaction that took place when I walked in the room. It was almost they had gone from that dark place to this uplifted and joyful disposition. And I tell people all the time, it wasn't, it was not me that caused them to respond that way, but it was who I represent that caused them to find newfound hope, knowing that God is here. That's how it ought to be for the Christian, not just the pastor, not just a deacon, but people ought to notice that there is a distinct difference in how we experience this life because of our relationship with God. James is challenging us to behave how we believe. He says, brothers and sisters, even in verse number 21, verse number 21, all the way to 25, he, he really points out that we can boldly behave how we believe because of our history with God. Yeah, our, our history with God did not start today, but our history with God has started generations upon generations ago. Testimonies that have been passed down through your family and my family. I'm telling you, the same God that did it back then is the same God that's doing it right now. Maybe that's why you all are, are still so hopeful because of your history with God. That, that although we, we face some various challenges now, there's inflation in the land, a pending pandemic, injustice is still on an all-time high, but I'm grateful that because of my faith is so real in me, I don't have to lose sleep at night. Because my faith is so real within me, I don't have to worry or be overly concerned. I know that God has time and eternity in the palm of his hand. I know God is able to work out the various details of my life. And I don't believe I'm the only one that knows this, that you yourself have history with God. Is there anyone online that can testify, Pastor, you're, you're on my street. I've, I've sure enough got some history with God. There are moments that I thought it was over, but God said, you're just getting started. There were some moments where I counted myself out, but God says, I still have more in store for you. There were some moments where I thought that the journey had come to an end, but God was still using all of those things together for my good. Look at what James says. He says, don't you remember that our ancestor, Abraham, was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? He said, you see, his faith and his actions work together. His actions made his faith, don't miss this, complete. Yeah. The elephant in the room today, as we talk about faith, is not if we have faith in God, but rather can God have faith in us? That's the elephant in the room we don't address. Because we know from experience that we could count on God. But when the road gets rough, and when you get bad news from the doctor, and the economy is failing each and every day, can God have faith in us? to not relinquish our position or our point of view? Can, can God really trust us to say, you know what, God, I'm, I'm not attached to you just for what you do. I'm attached to you for who you are. And if you don't do anything else for me, God, I want to say, God, you've done enough. Is our faith so for real? that God can trust us. I know he's not listed in, in this text, but you remember Job? The beauty of Job's experience with God is that we find out that there is something, hear me today, greater than God's love. Yeah, there's something greater than God's love. And that's when 
God can give you his trust. Yeah. What a compliment. What a joy. When the creator of the cosmos, the one that stepped out on nothing, started saying something, and all of a sudden everything was. The one that can cure all manner of diseases, that can work on hearts and minds. What a joy it is to be able to say, God, you can trust me. I want to challenge us tonight to be able to work on our relationship with God in such a way that not only can we trust God, but we know that God can trust us. James is challenging us to behave how we believe. He wants us to not just have good religion, but he wants us to challenge what we call good religion. It's not just gathering, but it's understanding God has called us to go. It's not just meeting, but it's meeting people at the point of their knees. He says, we've got history with God. Look at Abraham when he had to offer up Isaac, but yet even though he had prayed and cried for Isaac to be uh, alive, to have a child, God gives him what he prayed for and then challenges him to see if he will give it back to him. Don't miss it. He says his actions made his faith complete. And so it happened, just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. And his faith was so for real that he wasn't just a fan of God. He wasn't just a follower of God. But the text says he was a friend of God. I'm telling you, there's levels to this because many of us are just fans of God. You, you, you find it all throughout the Gospels wherever the Lord healed the sick or raised the dead or did some miraculous work, he had crowds following him. But the distinction was that day when he started preaching about his resurrection, his death and resurrection, and the Bible says people left him by the droves, that, that multitudes of people left the fellowship because they could not identify with the fact that he was truly the son of God. See, those were followers. Those were fans. Those were fans that were attached to him for what he does, but then there are followers of God that, brothers and sisters, we're not attached to God for just the miracles. We're not attached to God just because he provides for us. We're really attached to God because we love him. That he has saved our souls, that he has made the difference in our lives, and so we are followers. But Abraham goes to another level. Because his faith is so for real, God calls him friend. I don't know where you are tonight. I pray to God he looks at me as a friend. I mean, after all of these gatherings, after all of our efforts, the question ought to be, what do we believe? And how does our behavior support that which we say we believe? I want to believe in such a way that God just doesn't see me as his follower, that God counts me at his, as his friend. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says he was called the friend of God. So it goes on to say, so you see, we are shown to be right with God. Watch this by what we do. Not just what we say, not because we've got the right clothes on, quote unquote, not because we've been a part of the church for so long, but the measure of our faith is not just by what we say, but by what we do. Bible says, so we see we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. He even brings up Rahab, the prostitute from the Old Testament, and points out how her faith, she was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. And I know there's a lot of churchy folk that might have a problem with a prostitute that can be found right with God. But I'm telling you, it's not about your form or fashion, 
It's about your faith. And maybe we miss out on people and miss an opportunity to really be all that God has destined for our churches and our ministries to be because we look on the outside for form and fashion, but God, as he did with David, looked on the inside according to his faith. Aren't you glad that God is not like many of us that will misjudge or prejudge and label people with a limitation based upon what our personal preferences are, but God says, I'm looking at your heart, I'm looking at your faith, and he says, if I can use a prostitute, surely I could use you. That's somebody's testimony. You, you haven't dotted every I or crossed every T. Your reputation is not beyond reproach. But some of us ought to thank God that God develops us in private and then he uses us in public. But he doesn't share the, in, the insecurities or the intricacies of our false failures in our flesh. But God covers all of that up and he uses us for his glory because he's looking at the heart of the person. Thank God he, he looks at our faith. Because if he didn't look at our faith, many of us would not even have the opportunity to be involved in ministry. Y'all want to be quiet. Is there anyone online that could testify? You thank God that he looks at your faith and not your form or fashion, but he looks through his left eye of grace and looks out of his right eye of mercy and he looks beyond all of your faults and he sees your needs. Someone ought to give God praise tonight because he does not deal with us how earthly people deal with us, but he deals with us on the matter of our hearts and our faith. Rahab was a prostitute, but yet she was found right with God. And so brothers and sisters, as we, we near close today, I want to challenge us to revisit what we believe as Christians. Yeah, what do you believe? We believe, brothers and sisters, that, that we serve the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There are three expressions of, of God. Theologians call it the hypostatic union, that we are three, three in one. That's, that's what we believe. And we believe that there was historically a fall of man, and God had to come up with a redemption plan. And through his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we believe by faith that he died on the cross for our sins, that he was resurrected on the third day. And because he lives, we have the right to have access to God and be redeemed from our sins. And, and one of these days, we believe that he's coming back. I wish I had some help. We, I'm not going through all of this for nothing. <laughs> but God's got something prepared for me. He's got a prepared place for a prepared people. We believe that sooner or later, and we believe that that time is coming soon. So it's so soon, uh, brothers and sisters, that we don't have time to be playing games. How soon? So soon that if we're not right with God, we need to get right today. How soon? So soon that that everybody ought to be praying for one another. And we ought not be fighting one another, but holding each other up. How soon? He's coming back so soon that we know that we got to get our families saved and our communities saved, that we don't have time to play little old church games and politics. How soon is he coming back? So soon that we've got to say yes to his will, yes to his way, not tomorrow, but today. That's how soon. We know the Lord is coming. That's what we believe. And if we believe all of that, then our behavior ought to line up with what we believe. I want to say it this way. If our faith really works, and I do believe that it does, then we must put our faith to work. If our faith really works, then the world is asking us to prove it. Prove that it works. So with all these churches throughout the nation, we shouldn't have all these issues with hunger. If your faith really works, prove that it works. No child should have to start the school year without school supplies. 
Come on, help me today. If your faith works, prove that it works. That no matter what background people may come from, we ought to be able to say, this is the Lord's house. You're, you're, you're welcome to grow with us if our faith really works. Because you, 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 many of us try to uh, catch a fish and, and try to change it and, and all of that, uh, try to, you know, kind of do things prematurely, try to make people look like us, and that's not what God is asking us to do. But, but he says you, you've got to be loving and patient and long-suffering. If your faith really works, that you believe that God can take you from one place to the next in your spiritual growth and development. And so if he did it for you, your faith ought to say he could do it for somebody else. That's what our faith, if, if you really believe what you believe, then we ought to put our faith to work. Brothers and sisters, there are so many challenges in our community, and the community could use a church that behaves how we believe. And let me just say it this way. I said it on Saturday in our new members orientation. Service to God and others is the rent we pay to stay here on earth. I want to say it one more time. Service to God and others is the rent we pay to stay here on earth. I want you to take some internal inventory and think about your own life and all that God has done for you, brought you through. I'm not talking about the stuff that your best friend knows about. I'm talking about the stuff that you were embarrassed and going through too much to even share it. But God was with you every step of the way. I just want to say it this way, if you don't mind, we owe God. And the reason why we do so much is not so that we can get the credit. It is because we realize how indebted we are to a gracious and a merciful God. We owe God everything. Service, is, service to God and others is the rent we pay to stay here on earth. And I just want to close with this. Um, it's a song that's been in our faith tradition for so many years. It says, if I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word of song, if I can show somebody that he's traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a Christian all, if I could bring back beauty, to a world of rot. If I can spread love's message as the master taught, then my living shall not be in vain. Is there anyone besides me that is rededicating themselves to behave how we believe? To give God our everything because we owe him everything. To make a difference in this community, in this, is, this city, because we know that faith, it's good, but James says it's not enough. It's not enough for us to just come here Sunday after Sunday. It's not enough to sing great songs or preach sermons. It's not enough for us to get in a huddle and encourage one another. But God wants us in this season more now than ever before to get beyond our beliefs and to honor him and for what he is and what he does in our lives to behave how we believe through acts of service and good deeds and here's the thing I said it already it's not so that we can be on the front of the newspaper it's not so our names can be in lights but it's so that people will understand that our faith is so real that it impacts you not just on Sunday but every day throughout the week in every situation Jesus is real and he's able to turn your situation around that they would see our good works and that they would glorify our Father which is in heaven somebody ought to give God glory and give God praise come on we could do better than that let's give him glory it's all about him God, we say thank you. 
We thank you for your word today. We thank you for the challenge that James has presented to us. We are committing ourselves to behave how we believe. That we will be a witness and an example and an inspiration to this world that so desperately needs it. We thank you that our faith is well founded in you. And our faith just doesn't make you feel good. Our faith has a way of turning situations around, improving families and marriages and children. God, we thank you that we've got history with you. You're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God, we thank you for your faithfulness to your people. Now, Lord, as we end this lesson, only to start on another one, God, there may be someone here that needs to give their life to Christ or touch hearts today, touch minds. Let them receive salvation. Let them come into this fellowship so that they can begin the work that they will not only believe, that they'll behave how they believe. God, we thank you in advance. We love you and we lift you. In Jesus' name, let every heart say amen. Can we put our hands together and bless God's name today? Hallelujah. Won't we, for those in the building, won't we all stand? Won't we all stand? I want to extend an invitation. Maybe someone here. I want to extend an invitation. There may be someone here or even watching online that is willing to accept the fact that God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for your sins and for my sins. But that on the third day, he got up with all power in his hands. If you're here, you need to be saved. Or if you're online and need to be saved and need a church home, I want to encourage you. If you're in person, you can walk down the aisle. If, you're, if you don't want to walk or if you're watching me online, all you have to do is text, I belong here. I belong here to 502-212-6587. I belong here. And we'll respond right away. I belong here. I surrender all. Is there one today? Is there one? Needs to be saved. Needs a good church home. Oh, we would love to have you. To thee at First Street Church. I would love to be your pastor. All you have to do is step out in the aisle by faith. Make that walk. Or text us. And let us know you belong here. Come on, I surrender all. I surrender. Is there one today? Come on, I surrender all. Oh, I surrender all. Is there one today? Oh. To thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Come on, let's sing it together. I surrender all. Oh, I surrender all. My heart, my mind, my soul. I surrender. God, I surrender all. Come on, all to thee. All to thee, my blessed, blessed Savior. Oh, I surrender. I surrender all. Come on, I surrender, I surrender, I surrender all. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I surrender. Oh, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. Oh. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together. If you're saved, then you know you're saved. 
Hallelujah. We are grateful, grateful once again for another, another Wednesday. And I want to take some time as we have come together uh, to remind you that I uh, want to take time to let you know that we, we have so many ways to give here at the church, so many ways to give to a God that has so many ways that he gives to us. So uh, please take note of our various platforms uh, that are right there on your screen. Uh, we want you to stay committed to God as he stays committed to you. Hasn't God been good to you throughout this whole pandemic? So uh, for those that are online, uh, we definitely, and in person, please take note of our various opportunities to give. And also for those in person that have tangible gifts, uh, we'll have someone right at the door uh, that can receive those. Look, I'm excited. I am so excited uh, that this Saturday uh, we will have our Youth and Young Adult Annual Day Rehearsal. Amen. This Saturday, this Saturday at 12 o'clock noon, uh, we're encouraging our young people to come out as we prepare for our Youth and Young Adult uh, Annual Day. And so that annual day will be uh, on August the 7th uh, during morning worship. Also on that same day, right after church, uh, we will have our church cookout right here on the campus. It's going to be a whole lot of food and fun and certainly fellowship. And so we're asking that you uh, make note of that. Uh, tickets, tickets for the cookout uh, will be available uh, this coming Sunday uh, by way of uh, Brother Doug Miller, who's coordinating uh, this year's cookout. He'll be right outside in the Welcome Center right after service. Uh, tickets will be available, uh, $5 for adults and absolutely free uh, for the kids. But this helps us offset uh, the cost for putting on uh, the cookout. So if you have any questions, uh, please contact Brother Doug Miller and he'll be glad to answer them. Uh, but I'm excited uh, that we're getting back to some sense of normalcy. Amen. God is bringing us through this pandemic and that's a blessing. So I look forward to that time. Also a reminder, a reminder, um, this announcement comes from Sister Rhea Chandler, Sister Connie Fraction. Look, Vacation Bible School is coming up, and we're excited. The first week in August, first week in August from August 1st through August 5th, beginning each night at 5.30 p.m., dinner will be served. We'll be right here at the church. And so I want to encourage all of you. Uh, we'll have a link that will be available as well as in-person registration. Uh, but we're excited about VBS this year, and we are reimagining VBS. Amen. That is our theme, reimagine VBS. And so if you have any questions, uh, please contact Sister Rhea Chandler. But we're excited. Let's thank God in advance. It's going to be a blessed week. It's going to be a blessed week uh, that first week in August. Uh, let us not forget Sister Crow uh, is leading the effort for our back to school uh, program this year. That'll be August the 4th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, we're doing that this year in partnership with Bridges of Hope. And so we, we ask that you continue. I, I've seen your donations. Please continue to bring your donations of school supplies uh, to the Welcome Center. We've got boxes that are positioned out there. And uh, if you, Sister Crow is also still receiving or soliciting support. Uh, if you would like to volunteer uh, behind the scenes, uh, please contact Sister Crow. And she'll be glad to have you. Uh, also, I uh, want to keep in mind that we are gearing and preparing for the month of September. Well, you say, well, we haven't even gone through our August yet. Well, we were preparing in August for the month of September. We're declaring the month of September as Back to Church Month. Amen. And so here's my challenge. Here's my challenge already. I want you to already be thinking of individuals in your family and within your circle uh, that you know uh, because of the pandemic has have become somewhat disjointed from in-person worship. I uh, haven't seen them in a while, or, or you know you've talked to them and they're, they're still in search for a good church home. I wanna encourage you to start inviting people now uh, because in the whole month of September, we're praying by faith that God is gonna send great revival to this church and this community. I believe it already, don't you? God is gonna do it. And we just need everyone uh, to be participating and prayerful about this. So please start inviting people, letting them let people know that it's back to church month at First G. And we're looking forward to all aspects of our ministries uh, to be active and ready to go, especially concerning our youth, uh, our young people here at the church. Amen. Amen. So be prayerful about that. We're excited 
uh, about what the Lord is doing. And we're looking forward to the month of September as God allows lives to be changed and souls to be saved. We're going to praise God right now in advance for it because I know he's going to do it. And so we thank you. Thank you for your prayers and your participation. Have you all been blessed today? Have you been blessed? Amen. I want to thank God once again for our online worshipers uh, today. Thank you for connecting with us. I want to thank God for those that are here. God bless each and every one of you. We look forward to being right here, same time, same channel, on next Wednesday as we continue to go through the book of James. Amen. Won't we all stand? Won't we all stand? God bless you. God keep each and every one of you. A uh, reminder that on tomorrow, on tomorrow we have sweet hour of prayer. That will be in the Martin Chapel. I hear you, sweet hour of prayer. All right. It will be in Martin Chapel at 12 o'clock p.m. Uh, please don't miss it. It is a power-packed service of prayer, testimony, and praises to our God. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy. Oh, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. He is worthy, worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good. All right, repeat after me. Love God limitlessly. Serve God faithfully. Give to God generously. Stay with God wholeheartedly. Now lift your hands as high as you want this church to go. Now unto him that is absolutely able to do anything but fail. May God bless your hands so that you won't just be busy, but you'll be effective. May God bless your hearts so that you'll help somebody along the way. May God bless your mind so that you'll have the kind of peace that doesn't even make sense. And may God be so good to you that it literally leaves you speechless. The Lord be with you both now, henceforth, and forevermore. And all of God's children said amen, amen, and thank God. Let's praise God on the way out of here. God loves you, and your pastor loves you too. Go in peace.